Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD and MDT 2012 update one, right? And Windows 10 technical preview deployment. Uh, I think this is episode nine and it's time to deploy our image. Now, there's so many ways to deploy your image and I love one way, but I'm going to show you guys both ways, right? There's two ways to do it. Well, I already know two ways. There's the media boot and there's a pixie boot. Now, Pixie Boot, I'm going to show you guys a little later. That's the part that I love doing the most because it's a little easier for me. And Media Boot is you can either create a uh, ISO and place your custom image or your deployment stuff within a flash drive or a DVD. And you take that medium and you, you know, boot from it. Okay. So that's the part that I'm going to show you guys on this episode. Now, to do this, we need to go inside our advanced configuration. We're going to go inside Media as you can see, a media node doesn't have anything within it, right? So we're going to right click on that node and go to new media. And the media path is going to be whatever location. Now, got to make sure that this path has enough space to drop all this stuff into. So I'm going to go to browse and I'm going to go into my share folder. I have MDT. I'm going to create a new one and it's going to call BTNHD media. So that's the name of the folder and we're going to press OK. Now you give it a nice little comment. Now your selection profile is really up to you. I would normally do everything because I want this flash drive or DVD to have everything so I won't have any problem. This is also great if you're doing stuff offline, right? Uh, click on next, click on next and what's going to happen is it's going to start doing its thing. It shouldn't take too long and it should be done. Awesome. So I'm going to hit finish and as you can see now we have something within our media node. Uh, gives you the root of where everything's going to be dropped. Selection profile is going to be everything, and you got your GUID, which we're not going to pay too much attention to that right now. What we need to do is right click on this, go to properties. Now, within properties, again, you got general rules and your Windows PE. Now, this is pretty interesting. With because you're actually taking this media within um, offline. Uh, you don't need to add anything here, but but if you guys are still within your network and this deployment still needs to talk to your network deployment share, that's when you go inside and start modifying it like we did with the custom settings I and I uh, video that we did a while back. If not, I, I don't touch it. You got your Windows PE again. We went over with the deployment properties. If you want your, um, if you want this media to create an ISO for your 86 bit and your 64 bit, hey, this is where you add it. I need it to create a let's see, 64. I need it to create a 64. It's not gonna do a 86. Is it gonna do the 86? Yes, it's gonna do the 86. Cool. It's gonna do the 86. Uh, I want 86 to also have .NET and Framework, Windows, PowerShell. So, and I supply that, and I need to do the same thing for 64 bit because remember, we're placing this within a medium either a DVD or a CD or a flash drive. This right, this portion, this media is different than the deployment stuff that you we did in the, in the last videos. Uh, drivers and patches, I'm gonna leave everything as default, general. Okay, that's great. Apply. Okay, now once you do all the modifications within your properties, again. I can't really tell you guys what's best in your environment. You actually have to go inside your media, go to properties, look around, look at everything, and start playing around and making changes on your environment, okay? Uh, once you do all that stuff, you want to right-click on it, and you want to update the media content. Once you update the media content, what's going to happen is it's going to take all that stuff within your your MDT node, whatever you have in your applications, your operating system, your out of box drivers, and it's going to place all that stuff within that location that you told it. Now, I place it inside my Z drive, my MDT setup, and within my BTNHD media, as you can see, I have my content, and you're going to see everything in there. Now, we're going to let this ride, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you guys what utility I use to burn it into a flash drive to make it bootable. All right? And we're back, guys. It completed successfully. Our update for our media is done. It takes a long time, so you have to just go get a cup of coffee or go get lunch or something. Uh, so let's go inside our folder, and let me refresh this. And as you can see, it has our light touch media.iso. The content has all that good stuff. Uh, let's go here. Let me refresh. There it goes. 
so deployment our application which is our Mozilla Firefox 35.0.1 which is this right here uh, it also has our operating system awesome so so what's next so the next thing that you need to do is uh, get a flash drive and we need to use a utility I like to use Rufus so remember I'm doing everything on a virtual environment so I'm gonna minimize this and uh, I have a flash drive and you guys are gonna see that the flash drive is gonna show up so I'm gonna go inside my transfer folder MDT and this there goes the content of my uh, the stuff that we just created the media uh, flash drive should be popped up so let's go here it's not popping up so let me take it out and place it back in Make sure that you take a flash drive that has enough space in it. Okay, it's finally reading. Awesome. Just make sure that, uh, again, you make sure that you have a flash drive that has enough space. I have an 8 gig uh, flash drive embedded. So the utility that I like to use is called Rufus. Uh, it's free. That's one of the things why I like it because it's a free utility. Uh, do you want to allow? No, I'm going to do now. I don't want to allow for it to update or check updates. So uh, automatically it's gonna pick the flash drive. This is G, eight gigs, awesome. Uh, you can actually change the partition schema on the fly. Uh, I like to keep it as the default, which does a MBR partition scheme for BIOS or a, UE, a UEFI uh, schema. So uh, the file system is 32, uh, FAT32. I leave it as the default, default. I leave everything as default. The only thing I, ch I probably change is the name of the label. Uh, from here, you choose your ISO. Now, the ISO is going to be the one that we created with MI Media. So, it's that one right there. This one right here has everything in it. All right, guys. Uh, it's pretty big. So, it's about four or five gigs. So, you gotta, again, you got to make sure that your flash drive or your DVD or, me, or your DVD or CD has enough space. Most likely, you can't put this on a DVD because the DVD only contains 4.7. So that's off. That's out of the question. So you got to get a flash drive. So I'm gonna open, and it's ready. And we're gonna do it. Start. It's gonna give you a nice little warning that everything inside the flash drive will be erased. We're gonna press OK. And again, we're gonna let this run. And when we when this is completed, we are gonna go and see how it actually looks in real life. And we're back, guys. I turn on the webcam so you guys can see because I have a physical box. Um, doesn't have any internet access on the back, uh, no ethernet ports or anything. It is a Dell Vetro 220S. I'm going to show you guys on the flash drive. It's it looked like roof. It's already completed. So I'm going to close this up. We're going to go into the computers. And as you can see, there goes my G drive with all the goodies that we need. And I am going to remove that. Let's remove that. Uh, yeah, G, we're going to eject it. We're going to do it the right way, right? Because we don't want it to get corrupt. And here goes the flash drive. I'm going to place the flash drive. I don't know if you guys want it in the front or the back. I'm going to do it on the back side, right? No, let's do the front side, right? I'm going to do the front side. There you go. Let's start it up. Press the power button. This is the monitor right here. So if everything goes well, I'm going to do an F12. I'm going to do an F12 so I can get into the boot menu. Uh, and the reason why I want to get into the boot menu because I want to see if, if I'm able to boot from a USB. If I'm able to boot from a USB, that's awesome, which I am. I'm already set up to boot into a USB. If you're not set up to boot into a USB, you guys need to get into your BIOS, which I'm going to show you guys. Uh, within your BIOS setting, you got to make sure that you're able to boot within a USB. Now, it really depends on what machine. If you're dealing with a Dell, most likely you could kind of copy where I'm doing, uh, but if you're dealing with another brand like Lenovo or HP or Sony, it's a little different. So I believe you guys want to get into integrate, integrated uh, peripherals, and you got to make sure that it says USB controller enabled. If it's disabled, uh, that means you won't see the flash drive. If it's enabled, you will see it. So I'm going to do a F10. Uh, which is going to save and exit the setup. It's going to reboot the process, and I'm going to do an F12 like a madman. F12, 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 F12. It's entering the boot menu, and we're going to pick our flash drive. And 
uh, we're going to boot from our flash drive. So let's boot from our flash drive. Press any key to start from the boot. Yes. So I'm pressing enter. Any key. doesn't matter. Just press any key. And if everything goes well, you're going to see a nice little loading uh, bar saying loading files. Uh, it, it will take some time because you are using a flash drive to boot from and um, you just got to be really patient when it comes down to this this portion right here. Okay, so right now it's processing it. Because we didn't do any custom um, settings modification with our media boot, you're going to get this. So uh, just make sure you just run the deployment wizard. It looks like with the new MDT 2013 update one, they changed the background. Uh, Remember, we're only I'm only pushing out a 64-bit. I didn't deploy 86 uh, an 86-bit operating system, so we're only going to see Windows 10 64-bit. But most likely for you guys, you already imported an 86 and a 64, so you're going to get that option. Uh, so let's choose your operating system. Hit next. Uh, give it a computer name. We're going to do let's go BJ test test one right. Uh, I'm not going to join the domain right now, so I'm going to skip that. Go next. I'm not going to move any data or settings, so we're going to hit next. The user data restore, we're not dealing with that right now. We're going to hit next because, again, this is a brand new machine. It's not really a brand new machine, but, you know, pretend, guys. It's a, it's a machine that you just took out the box and you need to get it up and running, right? Uh, language style is English. English. Uh, time zone, again, we didn't make any modifications within the custom settings. I-95, we didn't tell it to set it as Eastern Standard Time. So set it to whatever time zone that you need it to be. Click on next. Applications. I need Firefox installed on this machine and hit next. Now, again, we didn't set or we didn't tell the media boot that we wanted to add a an app, you know, a um, uh, administrative password. So again, this administrative password is for your local admin account on the machine. It's not a uh, a domain admin okay so let's give it a password of something real simple make sure that you guys do remember it there we go hit next and uh, nice little detail and we're gonna begin the process so right now um, right now is deploying when it needs to do it, getting all the information it's gonna partition the drive right now is preparing this zero partition sorry formatting it uh, for to deploy the operating system when you're using a boot media I want you guys to keep in mind that you don't need any specific NIC drivers because again where I'm not I'm not really hooked up to the a network at all I'm not really hooked up to a network okay you're just doing everything offline uh, but if you do have your NIC driver and your storage stuff and other drivers within your out of box all that stuff will get imported and installed automatically uh, right now it's applying the, the image, it's installing the operating system, it's in 0%. So I'm going to cut off right here and hopefully when it's completed, um, we continue, right? Alright guys, it looks like we're almost there with our deployment uh, using our media, our little uh, bootable flash drive. But I got to this point, it's time to enter your product key. I don't have a product key because it's a Windows 10 technical preview. So I'm going to say do this later. And once you click on that, it's going to continue the process. Right now, it's finalizing the settings. So I'm super excited that it's almost done. Uh, once it completes, I think it's going to jump into the desktop portion. And then it's when it's going to push out the application and whatever custom settings you did in uh, the task sequence. Uh, I didn't do much. So it should be quick. And pretty soon, we're going to have a fully imaged uh, desktop, a physical machine with our Windows 10 technical preview so right now it's saying hi it's the basic uh, run through that you get when you install Windows 10 for the very first time I'm gonna let this run and then uh, I bring you in once we're inside that environment alright guys and it's done our Windows 10 technical preview which is actually build 9926 is completed oh my god this is pretty smooth I think downtime was about um, 20 to 25 minutes or less than that uh, let's go into our start menu I don't even know if I can't even get into the start menu oh there it goes it's just really slow again this machine is extremely slow it's only running about 2 gigs of memory it's a 
is a Core 2 Duo. So I really don't recommend a Windows 10 operating system running on a machine like this. So that's why it's running really, really sluggish. I can't even get the start menu to load up because this machine is so slow. But other than that, guys, that is how you use a bootable flash drive to uh, deploy your Windows 10 operating system using MDT 2013. Super excited about this. I, I, I'm sorry that I can't zoom in a little bit more because it's just a webcam. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, leave them at the bottom of where the comment section is at. Don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video as well as this guy. And I catch you guys on the next one, which I'm super excited because I have my list right here. And the next one is WDS, Windows Deployment Services. I can push it out through pixie booting. I love doing that. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.